There was an attack near Estonian border in Russia. Two Russian Ka-52 attack helicopters were destroyed and another two were badly damaged at the attack in the Veretje Air Force Base in the Pskov Oblast in Russia. Here is the airbase, 450 miles from the Ukrainian border and only about 20 or so miles from the Estonian border. About 60 miles from where I live this attack happened, what the hell? There is a video of the sabotage attack. This guy is very casually planting some explosives on two Ka-52 attackers. Helicopters. These choppers are incredibly expensive. They're not some old Soviet pieces of junk. They're the newest bird in the Russian helicopter industry, costing about 30 million USD per piece. Russia only had about 90 of these attack helicopters before the war, and now about 30 of them are destroyed. So they are very valuable for Russia, and Russia cannot produce anymore due to sanctions. An unnamed official in the Pskov region told the radio Free Europe that the airfield was very poorly guarded and it was very freely accessible. It's fairly easy to get into that military unit. There is zero security. If you want, you can walk on the runways. This is the state of Russian military bases. It is basically the border base with NATO. I mean, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania are 20 miles away. It is a border fort, a border airbase. That shows that Russian leadership really isn't scared of NATO. They know any attack is not coming from that side. They play that threat up in their propaganda aimed for their own people for brainwashing that NATO is going to attack us any second. But the fact that the air bases so close to the border are not even guarded shows that they really don't even believe in their own propaganda. They don't see NATO as a threat to Russia. They see NATO as a threat to Russian expansionism, but not to Russia itself. My friends, today we actually have a sponsor. Let's go. When I do research about these videos, I sometimes have to visit sketchy sites that are definitely trying to steal my data or IP. This is why I use Atlas VPN. It is dead simple to use and it works perfect. Just open the VPN, select a server and connect. Steal Black Friday deal because now you can get Atlas VPN premium for just $1.70 per month plus 6 months extra with a 30 day money back guarantee. This is the best VPN deal on the market. Keep your Google searches in private. With Atlas VPN you can search the web with real and organic search results and do it without anyone tracking your activity. This is hugely important when visiting lesser known sites or foreign sites like I do when researching these videos. Stop ads and malware. Atlas VPN is more than just a VPN. It blocks all the malicious links, ads and trackers and notifies you when someone is trying to steal your data. Protect unlimited devices. Yes, Atlas VPN protects all your devices with just one subscription. Steal Black Friday deal because now you can get Atlas VPN premium for just $1.70 per month plus 6 months extra with a 30 day money back guarantee. It's the best Atlas VPN offer of the year. So be quick and get your deal by clicking the link in the video description below. It's a limited time offer. Let's watch this next one together. It's also about destroying Russian helicopters. I know you guys like it. This is a Russian Mi-8 helicopter and it's a perfect angle. All right, Mi-8 flying over Ukraine, of course. All good, nothing wrong with it. Flying low, as usual, they all fly low to avoid raid. Oh, boom, man pad connects to the hull of it. It's still going. See, it doesn't go down immediately, but there's a fire going inside now. The pilot is probably trying to stabilize it or bring it down slowly. Wait, is it able to fly away like that? I don't think so. Usually a man pad hit takes down a chopper. No problem. No questions asked. But this one is going. That's a terminator of a helicopter. Going for such a long time. This is the longest one I've seen after hit. Great job. The pilot is good stabilizing this copter right now. Oh, there she goes. She is down. Yep, nothing left of it. But I gotta say the pilot did a very good job stabilizing that for like a minute after getting hit. Since the chopper was flying low already after getting hit, couldn't go any lower to make the impact 
any smaller I and mean, it was as low as possible before. But since it had about 30 seconds to a minute uh, knowing before it was gonna go down, the pilot could have just jumped out. That's how low it was. Let's now talk about the competition of the most attractive turret flight of this war. We've seen many videos of Russian tanks exploding. The turrets go woo, haywire to the moon. It's beautiful to watch. But this next one, over a long period of time, I haven't seen anything this pretty. Let's go. Pay close attention, it's a very quick one. Shoots, hit, and nothing happens for a while, just like with the helicopter clip. It takes its time, it's warming up, you know. The fire is finding its way to the ammunition storage. And please, give us that beautiful turret flight. Oh, look at that turret! Mwah! If I was an Italian, this was a pizza, I would be like that right now. Flew about 30, 40 meters up in the air. This tank had to be on full gasoline, full tank and full ammunition. Otherwise, I don't see this big of an explosion happening. We have yet another video to watch. This time is about Russian mobilization. Russian mobics or freshly mobilized have gathered in this video to ask about their one-time payment they were supposed to receive. Russian government promised one-time payment of 300,000 rubles to everyone who is mobilized. It should happen around one to two days after they arrive in their gathering stations. And these men haven't gotten it. Let's watch the video. <laughs> See, these people are talking right now that I came, nobody was arresting me to come, I came as a volunteer because Putin wanted me to come and he promised money, but he didn't pay up, that's what this is all about. None of these men have gotten their payments because Russia is a little bit lacking money right now. See, the commissar now said this never happened, not to the payment, but it never happened as they never promised you the money. You remember wrong, my friend. They're saying to all of these men that their memory is false, that they were never promised the money. This is how the Russian state apparatus works. You can say that something didn't happen and it didn't happen because the state says so. And right now they are erasing this debt of 300,000 rubles to all freshly mobilized because they're gonna die in Ukraine anyway in the eyes of the Russian state, so why pay them? This is how Russian leadership thinks, unfortunately. <laughs> So now they're blaming the communists that the communist party passed a bill to the state Duma to take off the table the payment of 300,000 rubles, basically don't pay them. They're rolling around the blame, who is to blame here? We're, the truth is Russia lacks money, Russia doesn't have money to pay to these troops. <laughs> Very truth. Then they should give up their party membership card and go instead of us. Very true. If they don't pay us and they made decision not to pay us, go to Ukraine instead of us. I agree with this message. As you can see, Russian men are not satisfied by the way that they are being over by the Russian state. But in Russia, you're brainwashed for about 20 years. You only find out about this stuff. You only find out about the truth of the leadership. If you go to war and then it's too late, you cannot go back anymore. So I feel bad for these men. They cannot do anything. They know they've been over, but that's their life now. 
I do feel bad. They've been lied to. President Zelensky stated in his telegram the following. Moscow will present any winter difficulties in its propaganda as alleged proof of the failure of United Europe. So together we must prove to the terrorists that the failure is a word about them, not Europe. I really want to talk about this message, especially about the Russian propaganda in winter. Russia has failed in most of their propaganda. And now they're clinging to anything, any statement they can get, like a drowning man clings to anything they can find. This is the situation in EU considering gas. EU has LNG terminals, liquefied natural gas. They're filled to the brink, 90% and up with every country. That means European winter is guaranteed. We have gas more than enough gas for this winter and even more. There are about 50 LNG ships next to the European coastline. They cannot enter the port because the, all of the terminals are filled already. They're like floating gas terminals for Europe. They're just standing there waiting for their turn. There is more gas in Europe right now than we need in this winter. We're good. But since Russia does not have anything else, all the cards are played. They're trying to play the Europe freezing card. Without gas, Europe would freeze, but the situation is that Europe is not without gas. We have Norway, USA and many other countries sending gas with LNG ships to Europe more than enough. But Russian propaganda feeds these lies to their own people, so a mediocre Russian in Russia right now thinks that Europe is going to freeze in this winter. Truth is, gas prices are high, but winter is guaranteed. We're gonna remain warm, there's not gonna be any shortages. Oil products are different, the diesel and gasoline. We have diesel shortages in Europe, but Russia is not talking about these. I wanna bring out this point to illustrate that their propaganda is empty inside. They could talk about the diesel shortages. No, they're talking about the gas shortages, which we don't have right now in Europe. After the attack on Russian Sevastopol military port, Russia wanted to punish Ukraine, fired about 50 missiles into Ukrainian electrical and water infrastructure infrastructure. Ukraine managed to shoot down most of them, about 40 missiles out of 50, very high interception rate and most of it thanks to German sent anti-air capabilities. The missile attack failed for Russia so they pulled out of their grain export contract. You know, the deal that was signed by Russia, Turkey, Ukraine and the UN to make sure Ukrainian grain ships are safe to carry the grain out of the Black Sea. Russia pulled out of it to punish Ukraine. Ukraine really depends on the revenues it gets from the grain export and a few of the world countries are actually dependent on Ukrainian grain to fight hunger. Russia knows this and pulled out of the contract and to their surprise, nothing changed. Ukrainian grain ships kept going, kept sailing out of the Black Sea and exporting the grain. Turkey kept in the contract and the UN also. Everything carried on. The new situation just showed the relevance of Russia in that contract. No one cared that Russia left the contract since they are not a threat in the Black Sea anymore. If Ukraine can attack their most heavily defended military port of Sevastopol with ease. Russia is now back in the contract. Yes, you heard right, they came back to the bargaining table. Because otherwise they would legally be out of the game and they don't want that. The influence lost for Russia with all of this clowning around is immeasurable. Turkey is now the main power around the Black Sea, not Russia. To illustrate all of this, here is a totally real video of Putin and Erdogan, you know, the leader of Turkey, discussing this. The military aid Ukraine has received in 2022 is only 14% less than the entire Russian military budget in 2022. So Ukraine has received 86% of Russian military budget in 2022. Latvia now takes the lead in giving a percentage to the military budget, followed by Estonia and Lithuania, all of the Baltic states, because we know the pain more than any other country, maybe except for Finland and Poland. Russia's fall draft has begun on the 1st of November. This is nothing new, it has been going on every year since the fall of the Soviet Union. The draft of 12 months, starting from 1st of November, Russian state channel stated that about 120,000 conscripts will be drafted and they will not be deployed to Ukraine to fight. Putin has declared the end to the mobilization, but this is not entirely true because he could declare the end to the mobilization because he knows he will be getting new draftees now that will be sent to Ukraine. Of course, they will not admit that, but in every conflict Russia has taken part in since 1991, we're talking about two Chechen wars, Russia-Georgian war, all of these three conflicts, conscripts were sent to fight, and Russia never admitted this, so these 120,000 
are just another batch of mobilized troops that Russia will use in Ukraine as cannon fodder. They will never admit to it. Right now Russia has sent about 87,000 freshly mobilized troops to Ukraine. The rest of them are still in Russia. Every fifth mobilize of those whose death has become publicly known died before being sent to the front. The causes of deaths were fights, alcohol, drugs, suicide and accidents. In some cases only 9 to 10 days passed from mobilization to their death. Other causes not mentioned in this tweet are malnutrition and cold. Mobilized are not given food or tents to keep warm. They're not even given winter clothes. And it's autumn. It's cold in Russia and in Ukraine. Also, this statistic is only about the known deaths. There are a lot of deaths that don't find their way into statistics. My friends, I've shot the very first episode of the Artur Rehi podcasts with Jake Pro. It was really cool. Link in the description below. Next will be Operator Starsky. I know you've been waiting for it, so go and subscribe to the channel. If you like this channel, you can become a Patreon. Link is also in the description below. I appreciate you. Until my next video, Slava Ukraine!